is up you guys welcome back to another one if you went into the channel I'm gold pony I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2022 Hyundai venue courtesy of Jack G and Volvo Hyundai in York PA for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so I am in this one today because there are actually a couple nice changes for the 2022 model year also this is an affordable SUV starting at just under $19,000 and we'll get to the pricing here in a little bit but also america's best warranty being five years sixty thousand mile bumper to bumper ten years one hundred thousand miles on the powertrain and you also get three years of complimentary maintenance as well and so in this video i will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering for ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always Let's start with pricing. So there will be a few different trim levels for the 2022 venue. First one being the SE, starting at $18,750. Then there is the SEL, which actually is the one we are in today, starting at $19,800. And lastly, the limited trim, which actually replaces the previous denim trim. But this limited trim is going to start at $22,050. And again, that's one of the new changes for the 2022 model year. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the venue is going to be the same. Powering this little beast is a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 121 horsepower at 6,300 RPM, 113 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,500 RPM. Power sent to the front wheels through a CVT or continuously variable transmission, producing a zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 8.8 .8 seconds, which we will test out here in a little bit. But MPG numbers in this one coming in at 30 in the city, 33 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so then, before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our venue, I did want to mention to you guys the drive modes. There's actually a circular dial directly behind the shifter. You can turn it to the left or to the right, and that's going to give you three different drive modes, including normal, sport, and snow, actually, which is kind of cool. That's going to essentially adjust things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the steering sensitivity as well. And so, having now got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the acceleration here to the test first, and let's see how quickly this new 2022 Hyundai venue here is going to get us up to speed. But said that before we actually do that acceleration test, I did want to take a quick minute and thank our sponsor for today's video being the Ridge Wallet. And so they actually sent me two of them. These are pretty cool. But you guys got to see all the different colors that they have available. But their slogan is carry less, live more. So essentially what they're saying is if you're tired of big bulky wallets in your pocket, go with this because it is a fraction of the size and it's pretty heavy duty as well. Actually holds up to 12 cards in this wallet. I don't think anyone has more than 12 cards these days. Anyways, there's over 30 different colors colors and styles available including carbon fiber and burnt titanium this is actually the burnt titanium i have here you guys and i also got a navy blue aluminum one as well but there's tons of different designs out there and of course since they are built so durable the ridge actually warranties them with a lifetime warranty so for whatever reason they break you simply just send it back and they'll send you out a new one but the ridge team is actually so confident that you will like it they'll actually let you test drive it for 45 days and then you can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it and it's also made with rfid blocking technology which protects you from digital pickpocketers as as well which is pretty nice so definitely feel free to check them out i'll pin a comment in the comment section below this video as well as in the description box and of course feel free to use my referral code being gold pony for an additional 10 percent off when you actually go to purchase your ridge wallet and lastly i did want to also mention they do have other products available like this waterproof backpack that i'm going to be using from now on for my camera gear so i don't get anything wet and also this thing charges up my camera batteries as well or your laptop if you wanted to use it for school possibly but this thing's definitely very heavy duty and i'm a big fan but now let's go ahead and get back to that acceleration test all right you guys this is going to be a little bit of a rolling start but here we go it's loud <laughs> eh, you shouldn't have any issues merging onto the highway definitely not the quickest thing in the world but it should get the job done so that should be plenty fine but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. And so braking will actually differ substantially depending upon which trim level that you go with with a venue. For example, if you go with that SE, you're actually gonna get the front disc rear drum configuration when it comes to the brakes. But if you were to go with the SEL or Limited like we have today, you will get a four wheel disc brake configuration, which is definitely going to be the one that is going to have better stopping power, of course. But as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that's going to come in at a very respectable 112 feet for the four wheel disc brake configuration at least that we have today, which is 
absolutely amazing. And here's why, typically in SUVs, you get upper 120s or 130s. Typically in sedans, like my Hyundai Sonata, you get around 123 feet. So 112 feet is crazy. That's like sport sedan stopping distance right there. So excellent stopping power in this thing. If you need to come to a quick stop on the highway or whatever the case, this is definitely the one that you're gonna wanna be in because this is going to get you to that quick stop. Anyways, as far as that braking fuel goes, it's been perfectly fine. Definitely leads more on the firmer side of things. It is not a self braking fuel, which is a very good thing in my personal opinion. That's what I personally prefer. But anyways, then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, couple torque and beam rear axle, gas pressurized shock absorbers as well. And as far as the ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine. Definitely no issues with that. I mean, you're gonna feel a little bit more of the road in a compact SUV, but for what it is, it's certainly perfectly fine. Here's a manual right here. Yeah, it's fine. No issues with the ride quality. As far as the steering feel goes, again, I feel like I've said this in other videos, it is a substantial difference depending upon which drive mode that you put it in. So for example, if I put it in that sport driving mode, it is going to be a much heavier feel to the steering, better helping me point me in the direction that I want to go. But then when I put it back to comfort driving mode, it does loosen up pretty substantially. So if you want loosey goosey, keep it in the comfort driving mode. If you wanted a heavier feel, more of an enjoyable feel in my personal opinion, that's going to be what the sport driving mode is for but anyways that touching on cabin noise i will say when you get a little higher up in the speeds you do get a little bit of wind noise kind of as expected for this vehicle but you get a little bit of wind noise coming into the cabin it's nothing too bad though something that i would personally be fine with but i did want to mention that and as far as visibility goes i can see perfectly fine out the back definitely not going to have any issues because of the shape of this suv so rear visibility is 100 on point but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Hyundai Venue. All right, and so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Hyundai Venue, blacked out, finished in black. It looks so dang good in black, at least in the woods here, I will say. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Black front grille coming with the SE trim level only because otherwise you're going to get those chrome accents that you guys are currently looking at for the SE Allen Limited trim level. And I definitely like that look better because I remember reviewing the SE trim level of this thing maybe last year. So one of these years in the past and it does not look as good as the front grille on this SEL that we have today. But anyways, to the sides, projector style headlights do come standard for the SE and SEL. They of course do come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark and at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Limited trim level, however, is going to add projector LED headlights with LED daytime running lights as well. And as far as where the headlights are located i think you guys could probably tell here it's a little bit different than some other manufacturers out there so i wanted to mention it the headlights are down below where you would think the headlights would be so up top you're going to have the daytime running lights and uh, hazard lights turn signals things like that but down below is where the headlights are actually going to be located in case anybody was curious or in case anybody didn't know that already but zooming back out here body colored front lip with silver accents coming on the limited otherwise you guys are simply going to get what you're currently looking at right now but but very nice looking front end, I think mostly because of that front grille. I love the chrome accents on it. But anyways, pretty much rounds out the front. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the venue. So yet again, climbing into the woods here for you guys. Silver roof rails coming on the SEL and limited trim levels, meaning not the SE trim level, unfortunately. Two-toned exterior with a white roof coming on the limited trim level only. Black window surrounds coming standard on all trim levels then. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be roof colored outside mirrors for the limited trim level only and if you're curious why the venue doesn't have integrated turn signals into the side mirrors They're actually located on the front fender Which I personally like a heck of a lot better a lot of JDM cars did that back in the day like the Integra uh, Like the Civic like a bunch of other cars, but I definitely like that look better It's a little bit out of the norm because every car is putting their integrated turn signals in the side mirrors these days So I like that they're on the front fender But take a look down then at the wheel setup 15 inch steel wheels with covers for the se 17 inch alloys then for the SEL limited again Which you guys are looking at right now, but 
pretty much rounds out the side of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the venue. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, body colored shark fin antenna, of course, all the way to the top, just below that rear spoiler, just below that rear window wiper. LED taillights then are going to come standard on the limited, but optional then on the SEL trim level. Of course, you have that venue lettering spelled out horizontally, definitely looks good back there. And just below it all, there is going to be a single exhaust outlet. It is, however, tucked away, but nonetheless, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the venue, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate for all trim levels across the board. So there's a button, of course, on the key fob to unlock all the doors. That's going to include the lift gate as well, but then just simply lift up underneath of the lift gate there, and it is going to open up for it. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 18.7 cubic feet behind that second row. There is a 60-40 split though, meaning the rear seats do fold down, and that will bump that up to 31.9 cubic feet if you wanted a little extra space then. Dual stage cargo storage coming for all trim levels. There is a rear luggage shelf or cargo cover is what I would call it for all trim levels as well. There's going to be some cargo lighting back there. There's also going to be one grocery bag hook and a couple tie down anchors back there as well. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire under there as well. But then make your way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 34.3 inches. So for reference, I'm at even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. No rear ventilation back Back there you really don't need it in a vehicle of this size no charging ports and no center armrests with cup holders either but don't want to mention all of that but now making our way up to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the se and sel however if you were to go with that limited you're actually going to get leatherette surfaces if you wanted that and then heated front seats will come with that limited trim level then as well but overall kind of surprised me for our sel with the manual adjustable cloth seating i don't know if they just got it right and they got lucky i don't know but the seats are definitely plenty comfortable for the them being manually adjustable and cloth seating. I gotta be honest, I can't always say that for this particular configuration, but I can say it for the venue for whatever reason. But then making our way to the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping, it is leather wrapped. If you were to go with the SEL or limited, but wrapped in urethane, for the SE trim level. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. It is a Hyundai logo on the one side. Then when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and the panic button, of course. But it is a turnkey start if you were to go with the SE or SEL. However, if you were to go with the limited, it is a push button start. Now it's gonna be optional, by the way, on the SEL, an option that we unfortunately do not have. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot in the brake and turn the key and then so once started up tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer then is on your right and there is a small digital display front and center to control what is on that digital display there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel there's how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's also trip a trip b of course when you need your next oil change there is a digital speedometer if you chose to display that up there is probably what i would leave it on of course your regular odometer and your outside temperature so pretty much everything you possibly want on the digital port portion of the gauges up there but then making our way to overall interior quality there is a power sunroof that is going to be optional only on the sel that we do have today we actually have that option that's pretty cool it's letting in some extra light for this video so i'm appreciative automatic climate control coming with the sel unlimited you guys can see that big temperature indicator front and center just in front of the shifter there dual usb charging ports coming with the sel unlimited as well also located in front of the shifter and speaking of there's a 12 volt power outlet within the middle of that there's a little bit of storage just in front of the shifter as well you got dual cup holders behind the drive mode button and a tiny bit of storage within the center armrest but I also want to mention above the passenger side glove box here you do have a little bit of storage within that as well so you can store some things up there as well if you wanted to but overall it's finished pretty much like you would expect a car of this price range to be finished I actually don't mind it I think it's very functional it's very practical so it'll certainly get the job done without a doubt for the venue but then let's go ahead and take a look at the tech display here eight inch color touchscreen display is going to come standard across the board you gotta love that bluetooth and audio streaming coming with that wireless 
wireless yes i said it twice android auto apple carplay for the se and sel i love that if you're a person that doesn't like clutter and all those pesky wires wrapping around everywhere you're gonna love this because wireless android auto and apple carplay at least is a big deal to me but having said that, the limited trim doesn't give you it. For whatever reason, you still have to plug it into the USB port if you wanted Android Auto, Apple CarPlay for the limited, for whatever reason. But anyways, factory navigation system coming with the limited. It's going to be optional on the SEL. You can, of course, check out your climate control settings up there. There is a voice memo system, which I always find is pretty cool on Hyundai. It essentially just allows you to record your voice and then play it back at a later date. And of course, you do have your radio information up there as well. By the way, when it comes to the sound systems on the venue, four speakers is going to come standard with the SE, six speakers then with the SEL and Limited. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio here. Let's see what we got planned today and let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, quite honestly, not that bad. That wasn't even Sirius XM radio. That was traditional FM radio too. So one of the better six speaker sound systems that I've heard in a little while. So I don't know, for six speakers, that was pretty good. I gotta be honest. Clarity was pretty darn wonderful on that for a six speaker sound system. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the venue in reverse, you will find a rear view camera taking up the whole stinking screen. You gotta love that. That isn't always the case. So I wanna emphasize that. Letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by mentioning IIHS top safety pick. If you were to go with the limited, because that only applies if you get the LED headlights, of course, but front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. That's all pretty boring, but also coming standard on the venue, forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, lane keep assist, and a driver attention warning system as well. And then if you were to go with that SEL trim that we have today or the limited, you will also get a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, being the little car indicators in your side mirrors, letting you know not to turn into the person next to you. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the venue, this really is quite an incredible value considering the price point of this thing. And not only that, you get an IIHS top safety pick with the limited trim, you get America's best warranty. So if you drive less than 10,000 miles a year, the engine, the transmission, the drive shaft, things like that are going to be warranted for 10 years for you. By that time, you're gonna want a new vehicle anyways. Three years of complimentary maintenance is gonna save you some money as well. Wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, so many vehicles out there. I would say the majority of vehicles out there are still not doing that, so I absolutely love that. As far as room for improvement goes, that wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay should be standard on the limited as well. So that is something I always say with Hyundai. They tend to do that. The top trim levels don't get it for whatever reason. But also, I think in my personal opinion, since I live here in Pennsylvania, we do get a good bit of snow. An all-wheel drive option would definitely be pretty nice for the venue. Not standard. It doesn't have to come standard, but just make it optional at least, at least for us here in Pennsylvania. But that about rounds out this review, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media, specifically TikTok at the bottom of the screen there if you like, so you can see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. I'm a swing country there. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I'll see you guys all in the next video. I'm sorry. Stay gold.